Dear viewers, welcome to this episode of Expert Speaks. Mutual fund investments needs no introduction. Invest in mutual funds, sit everything has become a household name. Thanks to the raging bull market, what we have been seeing in the last three, four years, the, the rise of fintech companies, articles, newspapers, television shows, everywhere mutual fund is a hot topic. But there are finer points to consider when you invest in your mutual funds. In this episode, I'm going to talk to the guest of the day, Mrs. Srikala Basham, about the mistakes people make, the wrong assumptions people make when it comes to question of mutual funds. Stay till the end of the video. We are going to discuss some of the very fine points many would have missed. This is NRI Money Clinic for you, and I am Dr. Chandrakant, your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic, no hype, just the right advice. To talk about the investments in mutual funds and all the points that you need to know, the mistakes people make while they invest in the mutual fund, I have invited for today's presentation, eminent guest speaker, Mrs. Srikala Vashem. Mrs. Srikala Vashem has more than three decades of experience in the financial line. Her initial part of the career in the finance started with writing to prominent newspapers like Hindu Online and Times of India. She has worked for several other newspapers. She has also contributed articles to digital media like ET Online and others. In a career spanning 19 years, she has published thousands of articles on various aspects of finance like banking, personal finance and on corporate India. In the year 2007, she started a firm called Vita Advaita, which means Money Unlimited, with an intention of serving the common man the fine art of investing and reaching the life goals. Under her stewardship, in the last 17 years, hundreds and hundreds of families in Bangalore have realized their dreams by reaching their life goals. Uh, Mrs. Srikala Bashin has a huge fan following across New York. Welcome to this episode, Srikala Madam. Thank you, Dr. Bhatt, for having me on your television show. Thank you so much. Uh, Shikala, mutual fund needs no introduction. Today, mutual fund investment has become synonymous with the word SIP. Uh, SIP is mutual fund. Mutual fund is SIP. Is it true or is there more to it? What do you have to say? Very true. I think thanks to the promotion of uh, mutual funds, Ahi Hey, a lot of investors think uh, mutual fund investing itself is SIP. In fact, we have a lot of uh, first-time investors who come to us say that I want to invest in SIP, not mutual fund. So that is the popularity of uh, SIPs today. And as we all know, SIP is just a tool for investing in mutual fund. While uh, SIP has become a synonymous with invest in mutual fund, but SIP is the is the, is it the only way of investing in mutual funds, or there are other means of investing in mutual funds? Uh, what proportion of somebody's saving surpluses that they have can be invested to the SIP rule? Uh, I would say SIP or SIP is one of the options for investing in mutual funds. It need not be the only one. In fact, I mean, as all of us know. The beauty about SIP is you can get started with equity investment with a smaller amount. As you get older, as you get wealthier, I feel SIP should not be the only product for investors. They should have a combination of SIP and lump sum investments. In fact, we have done a lot of comparisons and you'll be very surprised. In the longer term, there is not much difference between the IRR you earn between a lump sum and SIP. It's just that SIP lets you get started small and I would say it is Shubharam ke liye, SIP is a good option. For people who want to invest in the equity market, is SIP the only route or is mutual fund the only route or are there any other means that you feel the investors can expose themselves? Uh, what do you have to say based on what you have practiced in your career? In our company, what we do is, as I said, SIP or mutual fund is the best way to get started for someone who has no exposure to equity. As they get older, as the money gets bigger, we also make them get exposure to other products. For instance, you have PMS portfolio management schemes, you have uh, AIFs, alternate investment funds. But then it also depends on the how much stomach the investor has for his abilities. And depending on that, we advise. But there are also a school of thought. In fact, we have a lot of clients 
who are very comfortable with only investing in mutual funds have built their wealth phenomenally. So there is no right or wrong answer. I would say it need not be the only product. You can have mutual funds and other options also. When it comes to question of investing in mutual fund, there are various categories of uh, mutual funds. You have aggressive funds, you have hybrid funds, you have debt funds, you have conservative funds, all category of funds are available. Since an investor is investing in mutual fund through the SIP route, do you agree with the point that they should choose only the aggressive funds? Reason being, I'm not exposing my entire amount of money in one go. Rather, I will be staggering my investment month after month. I will average out the price. Is the aggressive fund is the only place where they should invest or you have uh, any other suggestions for my audience? At Vita Dvaita, we believe any investor who comes to investing in equity, he needs to come with a minimum time frame of three to five years. So the longer the period, you can offer aggressive funds simply because the markets, as we all know, goes through the cycle. Your ability to average out and you know ride on the uptrend is much higher when you have that 10-year, 15-year, 20-year horizon. So to to give my answer short, I would say the longer the tenure you can afford to be more volatile, I would say, rather than riskier. And the shorter the tenure, go for you know, medium risk or low risk options. And that's what we practice in our organization. One of the key drivers of investment outcome is the asset allocation. Every asset doesn't perform all the time. So there are some assets performed this year, some assets, some other time. This is something which is seen over the different cycle. So every advisor speaks about asset allocation. Now, if some investor has to invest through the SIP, should he jettison this asset allocation uh, practice, which is uh, very common, or even when you are investing through the SIP uh, rule, even there also the asset allocation has to be practiced. What is your recommendation for the audience uh, when they invest through SIPs? Uh, yeah, very interesting question. I would say there's no straight jacket to one solution for investments when it comes to investment. Each individual is different. Having said that, I would say SIP is what? SIP kind of averages out your uh, volatility. So if it is shorter period, go for hybrid or low risky options. And if it is longer time, you can afford to be more aggressive or completely equity. Having said that, when an investor builds a portfolio of something like 10 crore, 20 crore, even a 10% correction in a year, we are talking about 2 crore volatility or uh, reduction in the portfolio value. Not all investors will be able to stomach that volatility. And that is when you need to go for asset allocation. I mean, it need not be 10 crore or 20 crore. It all depends on your fund requirements and your risk-taking ability. And yes, having an asset allocated portfolio really helps because, as you said, each asset class performs at different points of time. You have debt, you have uh, equity, you have gold, you have silver. Today, we have multiple options within mutual fund itself. So it's not a bad idea to have a multi-product portfolio. See, like you, we are also the uh, practitioners of finance. One thing that we have observed is, irrespective of the money the investor comes in, his vintage in the system or his experience of investing matters. Uh, somebody who comes and starts his investment journey for the first time, probably it makes sense for them to strictly follow the asset allocation, strictly go with the advice tendered to them. But over a period of 3, 5, 7, 10 years, when they become exposed to different market cycles when they understand that volatility is not lost and they can ride on the volatility. There are good days that will come when customers become more experienced with this kind of a phenomenon which happens in the market. That is the time probably they can take more aggressive calls. In the interim, especially when you start in the beginning, it's probably better for them to get into the strict asset allocation mode. Uh, have you experienced similar thing with your clients also? I think, Dr. but as you know, we are all part of the system. I think this is where our value add comes. As advisors, I think we handhold our clients so that, you know, we all have seen people who have been in 20, 30 years in the market, there is always a new high for the market, but not a new low. So I think when an investor goes through his experience is bad, we need to handhold him and tell him that, look, this is part of the equity culture, so don't panic. And that is where, you know, when we all get into the planning mode, I'm sure we all, you know, take our own calls and advise the clients and allocate the schemes accordingly. And when they panic, you know, because as you know, the good old joke in our industry is investor returns are always different from market returns. 
I think we as experienced professionals, this is where we bring value to the system, I mean, to our clients and made them go through this journey of pains and volatility. Then all this, uh, you know, the concerns can be addressed. But to answer your question, today, the multi-asset funds or multi-allocation funds have become far more diverse and have the ability to generate risk-adjusted returns almost on par with 100% equity fund. Yes, it's not a bad idea to have exposure to them too. Shrikal, one more observation that I have today is, these are the days of fintech companies. There are countless fintech companies which give direct access for investing into the mutual funds. The youngsters of today want to do it, want to invest in a direct way through the direct schemes. They don't want advisors in between. What has been your experience of working with these people? As at any point of time, do-it-yourself investors have come to you and said that, no, it's not for me. Probably you handhold me and take you through. What kind of observations you have made during your practice? I'm sure uh, this is a favorite question for many of the listeners and practitioners. I would say a simple answer for this. When we all fall ill, you know, when our diseases are very simpler, we pop ourselves the medicines. When it gets bigger, we all rush to the professional doctor. Same is the case with our industry. When the money is small, you know, let's say your portfolio is 5 lakhs, 3 lakhs, 10 lakhs, you know that you can do it yourself. When the money gets bigger, you want the validation of thought process. That is where we come to the picture. And to answer your question, yes, we do have a lot of clients who in fact went out thinking they will manage themselves and after a couple of years have come back saying it is not worth it. Because at the end of the day, every professional has his own core activity. And with the change in our industry, is one of the most dynamic industry. And I think KYC itself keeps all of us very busy. So you need a professional advisor. So there hasn't been much challenge on that count. But yeah, there will always be people who think they can do it themselves. Good luck to them. Yes, Shrikal, I understand this. And uh, of course, uh, not everybody can be a do-it-yourself investor. At the same time, we cannot say that somebody cannot do it on his own. But that proportion is very small. See, now look at uh, different professions. For example, everything that a child can learn is available on Google. But we still send our children to the schools. Every information about every disease, every surgical procedure, everything that you want to uh, know about a particular medical complication is available on the Google. Still, you go to a doctor because you want an endorsement. When it comes to question of finance also, it's an evolving field. More than anything, finance field for an individual investor suffers because of human nature. So people want a reassurance. People have the usual problems of procrastination, indiscipline, all these things which makes them uh, depend on advisors. Plus when somebody crosses a particular age uh, band, let's say 35, 40 years, you get busy with your life. Your career is in an upward trend. You don't have time. You have the tiredness. You, are, you need a family time. That makes you outsource all these activities. This has been my observation. Somebody who comes beyond 35, 40 is actively looking for an advisor. He is looking for a value add. Uh, is that the similar trend that you observed in your uh, practicing career as well? Absolutely. I would add one more thing. I think as advisors, apart from doling out the advice, as you said, today everything is available. Everybody knows which is a top performing fund, which are, or what particular fund, where does it invest, everything. I think apart from all this, we as advisors should also make the whole process of investing very pleasurable and easy for our clients. I think that is when, you know, unless you bring that value add, if you don't upskill yourself as an advisor, a client has to be convinced that, you know, this advisor knows more than me. Plus, he's very knowledgeable and she's making, he or she is giving the whole comfort of investing. As long as you do that, I think today there is enough and more market for people to approach people like us, advisors, and take our help. Uh, Shrikala, you have been in this line for many years, many decades now. You still have that youthful vigor, energy to serve your clients. I know for sure that you are not doing this with the compulsion of earning money today. What gives you that satisfaction and what gives you that energy to keep digging even at this point of time? Yeah, wonderful. In fact, as you said, uh, you know, after a point, money is not everything. I think money is important up to a certain level, both for us and for our clients. And what makes us uh, do it day in and day out? I think all our clients, I'm sure you are also, you would agree with it. We are part of the dreams of our clients. 
that sense of satisfaction when they achieve the dream and somebody makes you part of you know that achievement process i think that is the biggest satisfaction we as financial distributors get it here i would like to give an anecdote a client of mine bought a mercedes benz car and she sent me the picture of that entire unveiling of the mercedes benz and sent me a note saying because of you we bought this i think this is what we all live for and i think that keeps us going day in and day out i think this is the biggest achievement i would say not financially but emotional comfort what clients have and we all a big family today nobody is a client it's a big family that you are managing uh shrikala thank you very much and i wish you all the health and that inspiration to keep going for many decades to come and dear viewers if any of you are there in bangalore you are looking for professional advice you can make best use of services provided by vitta dwaita they are located in bangalore for your benefit we have shown the email id of uh, mrs shrikala basham on the screen you can reach out to her if you have an intention to build your portfolios if you are look staying in bangalore or any part of the globe these days everything happens over a video conference you can do a things over online uh, so it's it's over to you you can always reach out to them uh, shrikala thank you very much for your time great insights and great uh, sharing of experience for the benefit of our uh, viewers we remain in gratitude to you for your kindness to spare your time for the benefit of my audience thank you very much thank you my pleasure and wishing all your viewers also a very happy <laughs> Yeah, right. Thank you, dear viewers. Hope the video that I have done today helped you to understand what it means to invest in mutual fund and some of the myths that are there in the mutual funds have been answered in today's episode. If it did give you the right insights into it, please do give me a thumbs up. If you are somebody who is yet to subscribe for my channel or watching this channel for the first time, please do hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon. Do not forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones and to friends and relatives. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRI Money Clinic. I shall be back with you with yet another expert with yet another thought next Tuesday. Till then, stay safe. Jai Hind. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.